Oppo is challenging Samsung with its own version of the Flip smartphone. It's set to draw plenty of interest at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona over the next few days. But we won't have to wait that long because, as you'd imagine, Image Matrix Tech editor Juro Sen already has one. Juro is in Spain. How is it? And uh, tell us about this new phone. Uh, good morning, Tim. It's wonderful to be back here in Barcelona after three years due to COVID. And this is a great event. We'll go into that a bit more later. But yes, it's the new phone. So this is the Find N2 Flip by Oppo. It's a severe and strong challenger to the Samsung Flip 4 and the Motorola Razr I've shown you before. And here it is. I got a chance to crack it out. I twisted their arm to get an early preview of it. And it is a great phone. It's, it looks very similar to the Flip 4 from Samsung, but it really is nice in the hand, and it's completely flat. What they've done with the hinge is probably one of the best executions I've seen of flip phones, and I've seen a few in the factory. Now, you can see that crease slightly when, when the back light is off, but I tried to feel it, and I could not feel a thing. I don't know if my fingers are desensitised, but the fact is that was as flat as a tack, and that's a great accomplishment. So it feels like it's one piece of glass, and it does a really good job. So it's been through a lot of testing. Uh, they can, uh, they say it's good for 400,000 opens and closes. So I don't think you're going to run out of uh, the hinge life and the, the lifespan of the phone. So it's pretty handy in that regard. And these things tend to be a little bit more fragile than others. Now, it's not fully waterproof. It's uh, splash-proof. Uh, it's got a great battery in it. It's uh, 4,300 milliamp hours. That's big for a flip phone, which traditionally struggle. It has a little easel thing. It doesn't do what the Samsung one does. It goes uh, uh, at any angle where you can stop it, but it's still pretty good. And you can do things like this, Tim. Because of that easel setting, you don't have to find anything to rest your phone on. It just sits up on its, uh, on its back like that. So it's a really cool way to uh, absolutely use um, this phone uh, as not just the flip-out version, but when it's closed in a clamshell, it's really handy. So this has put big pressure in the market. Uh, I know Samsung's already put their Flip 4s on special. So we don't know yet what the price will be for this phone in Australia. We're expecting that in the next couple of days, and I'll bring that to you. But it's great news for us in Australia. The uh, Find N2 Flip's coming hopefully soon. We'll know with the uh, very uh, important announcement in the next few days. But it's great for us as consumers because there's really strong pressure on prices for a phone that probably a few years ago, years ago has got to cost you thousands of dollars. I think my children are on the money. I do need to upgrade from my iPhone 8. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, it takes a while, doesn't it? Now, what is Mobile World Congress all about? Uh, Tim, if it's about a smartphone, then this show is all about it. So it's been on hiatus for three years. It came back sort of last year, but was nowhere near as big as it used to be. But it's back at a big time. Security is a big thing here. You know, I've got a pass to get in. It's pretty much just on my phone. So it does a lot of facial ID and things like that. So you go in there and you really get your hands on new phones, phones that we may not see uh, after going through security. You've got so much to look forward to. It's such a high-tech event. It really is a privilege to be here and covering it. So you... You can only see the best phones here. There's phones that I'm going to show on my channels during the week, Tim, that we don't even get to see in Australia. So it's very frustrating. Occasionally, people will order online to get some through. But it really is a great event. Uh, it'll be packed to the rafters. And uh, there's also some weird and wonderful stuff, Tim. I'm going to bring all that weird and wonderful stuff, including the latest uh, 5G. Uh, I'll be speaking to Vicky Brady, too. She's here from Telstra. So great to see Telstra have a big role over here. But, yeah, it's it's great stuff. So they're even talking about 6G. So look out. We haven't even finished 5G yet, but there's so much excitement. You can tell I'm excited. Yeah. Now, first it was Apple. Now Samsung has announced satellite communication using smartphones. Yeah, so this is a big deal. So they've done a virtual test of the chipset in Samsung, and they've released that they will... Uh, be able to use, uh, hopefully in the near future, uh, smartphones in a limited capacity to communicate with satellites. As you know, in remote zones, you can't get cell coverage. That's logical. But uh, by uh, modifications now, uh, we can see it's sort of available on the latest phones. You can do things like what Apple's done, and that's communicate with satellites in emergencies. So Apple's way ahead here. You can see examples of it being used. So that is available now in the US, Canada, France, Germany, Ireland, 
and the UK are using the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro. So you, if you get in trouble, you can get a message to a satellite. It's very difficult for a low-powered device like a, a phone to do this. So it's got to squeeze a message out. And these questions and, and answers are pre-programmed, so there's no messing around. So this is really important. This is great news for anyone getting lost and great news, hopefully down the track, we'll get this in Australia around this region because, as you know, if you get lost in the bush, it can be quite uh, tragic. Absolutely. Now, finally, a new survey says almost 40% of housework will be automated in 10 years. <laughs> you can't wait 10 years, Tim, can you? Oh, look, I love that little eco-vax. You just press a button and off it goes. <laughs> almost makes you a cup of tea. Well, there'll be more of that. So this is an interesting, from PLOS One, this is a survey of people far smarter than us, people, you know, scientists and all that involved in AI. And essentially, they think in about 10 years, 39% of homework will be uh, automated. Now, this will be difficult. I'd like to have this, though. Like a, I know it's a, it's a touchy subject, but to have a toilet roll robot coming through at an emergency is a pretty good idea, I think. So that sort of stuff, cleaning the house, robots cooking, those sorts of things. Over the next 10 years, there's going to be more of it. Maybe taking care of a, of a loved one who's not physically capable of doing certain things, that might be a bit different. But uh, I found it interesting that they thought it was just 39%. I think we're a long way from the Jetsons, though, uh, mm. Tim, although I'd love one of these things to help me with the backs, and I know you love it. But uh, they, they also had to tell you something about They found that the researchers found that uh, male UK, UK experts uh, tended to be more optimistic uh, about domestic automation. Uh, their female counterparts, not so optimistic. In Japan, it was the reverse. So a few uh, ideas about how the uh, next 10 years are going to roll out in terms of home automation. I've got to say, I've got some of it in my place, but I need, I need something to get the leaves out of the pool regularly and uh, all that sort of stuff. It's, I can't wait for the automation, mate. Yeah, that robot, that toilet roll robot would have helped out Elaine in... Uh... <laughs> Seinfeld when you can't spare a square. I, uh, I, look forward, I look forward to getting a full wrap from Barcelona next week, my dear friend. All right, Tim, great to speak to you. Speak to you next week. Absolutely.